Hey guys, it's Jennifer Barrett here with Central Women. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey as we come together and grow together. Please watch out for our content coming your way every month. At the beginning of every month, you'll have a video with a special speaker who goes into our monthly content. And then there will be weekly devotionals called Moments Together with Pastor Kim that she will unpack the scriptural side of our content. And then I will be bringing in some friends uh, to discuss on a panel with me as we really dive deeper into the material. We'll have a lot of fun together. And then please make sure that you join a small group so that in those moments you can really connect, make deeper friendships, and really dive into our monthly material as we again come together and grow together. This month, we are so blessed to have Pastor Crystal as she really dives into one of our most foundational aspects of Christian spiritual formation, the love of God. Thank you, Jennifer. I am excited to be on this journey with you as we come together and grow together. Last month, Pastor Kim unpacked the concept of the Imago Day is the foundation of spiritual formation, this journey we're on. We are made in the image of God, and He has given us stewardship capacity over ourself and His created order. Rooting our Christian worldview in the Imago Dei helps us view humanity through the lens of the creative purpose. Before the brokenness of sin entered the world, God created the earth in His love. I love looking for the stamp of God's image in those who do not even yet know Jesus. The genius of a scientist who discovers the answer to blindness or the artist who captures the image of a nursing baby with such accuracy, you fell swept into the beauty of human capacity. When I lived in Kyrgyzstan, I would watch in awe at, without any prodding, young men would give up their seat in a crowded bus to a young mother or a mother with a lot of children or an older woman. They didn't even, nobody even asked them to. It spoke to me of God's goodness being lived out in humanity. This month, we are going to unpack the second foundational element toward spiritual formation. It simply is, as Jennifer mentioned early, earlier, the love of God. It is the, this love that awakens the human soul to participate in the transformational inner work necessary to grow into full maturity. This love is most perfectly seen when God the Father sends his son, the perfect image bearer, to a cross in order for his image to be restored in humanity. Spiritual formation must be rooted in receiving and reciprocating God's love. The best human experience to model this reciprocal love of God is the healthy parent-child relationship. This week, I lost a good friend and a ministry colleague to COVID. Watching from a distance as my friend suffered with only the comfort of her excellent nursing staff was heartbreaking. I'm a really good friend, but what must it have felt like to be her father? My friend had just turned 60, but to her dad, she was still his little girl. He held prayer vigils night and day in the parking lot of the hospital, trusting God for a miracle from a distance. Finally, when the end was so near, the doctor invited him into the room to say goodbye to his dear one. As the story was told to me, he actually went and wiggled one of her toes like he used to do when she was a child. He sang the song he had sung over Faye since she was in her mother's womb. With tears streaming down his eyes, he told her how proud he was of her and how jealous he was that she would be the first one to see her mother again. Faye's love for her dad was rooted in his first love, allowing the love of God, the first love of God to penetrate the depths of our being is the only safe place to live as followers of Jesus. Transformation is birthed in the soil fertilized by God's love. Satan has used the weapon of shame to keep our hearts from receiving this love. Jesus 
He's the one that sets us free because of his righteousness, not our own. We can stand in God's love with no shame. If you look at our spiritual formation diagram that we have included on this social media post, you will see transformation starting at the cross. It is at the cross where we truly experience the love of God as Jesus does take our shame, allowing us to experience the tsunami of God's love and acceptance. It's showcased very plainly in Romans 5, 8, when God's love penetrates, our lives then become an expression of reverence and gratefulness to God for creating us, saving us, and giving us a future with hope. I just want to restate that when we feel God's love, then our entire life becomes an act of that reciprocal loving toward our God and others. God's love is rooted in the perfect love of the Trinity. We receive the love of the Father through the Son by the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. The image of love displayed through the Trinity showcases a love that is not simply attitudinal, but exists in the context of relationship between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our adoption as children calls us into this reciprocal love relationship and again is the birthplace of Christian transformation. First, we'll talk a little more deeply about the love of the Father. I mentioned that I lived in Kyrgyzstan for a few years. While I was there, my husband and I began to work in orphanages in the country. We didn't know that one of the missionaries we work, were working with was actually an adoption specialist. While we were there, God began to prick our heart about the potential of adoption. At that bo- point in time, we had two school-age young boys, but there was this young seven-year-old girl that started coming into our world through our work in the orphanage. As we began to walk with her, her ad- it, it became obvious that she was open for adoption. My husband and I began to talk and pray and said, could we be the family for this young girl? We began to do home studies and go through the process of adoption. And the Lord began to just open up the floodgate of opportunities for us to step into that adoptive process. It was just days before little Jenya was gonna join our home when we got word from the government that our adoption had fallen through. Can I tell you, I was heartbroken. I had opened my heart to adoption and that door had been closed. Later, when we came back to the States, God opened another pretty miraculous door for us to potentially adopt a young woman here through foster care. Again, we went through the process of going through classes and home studies until again it felt like just weeks or months until this little girl was going to come into our home and again the adoption fell through my heart was broken and for quite a few years i would ask the lord why why did you open our hearts to this adoption just to close the doors It was a few years later and I was in my just regular prayer time and maybe I was stirring over these adoptive journeys that were still raw in my heart when I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me very sovereignly and he reminded me of an image that was very common to me at that time. At that moment, I attended church in Brighton, Missouri and I, I always noticed how at the altars, there were always a few women And I knew that they were at the altar altar because they had a prodigal child. They had a child that was not serving the Lord or was in pain or agony. And they would run to the altar Sunday after Sunday, asking God for mercy on behalf of their children. As I was kind of drawn into this scene, the Holy Spirit reminded me of the fact that healthy parents never give up on their children. Whether it's at the altar, whether it's at the jail, wherever, parents pray and pursue our children, wanting the best for them at all costs. Then he said to me, Crystal, the reason I took you on these adoption journeys is I needed to open your heart to the spirit of adoption. 
He spoke to me, you see, I've given you two young boys to physically raise, but if you open your heart to the spirit of adoption, I will give you hundreds of young women to spiritually raise. I knew what Jesus was asking me at that time. He was asking me to join his relentless love that never gave up on his children. And I tell you, when I said yes to that, I felt his overwhelming love enter my body so that I could then not only receive, but give that love to help our young men and women grow spiritually. As we receive this love and give this love, it's, it's very similar to that prodigal son, that father's love that just never gives up. If we look at the prodigal son, if you remember that story, remember the younger son left and abandoned the father, but the father received the younger son back because the relationship, his relationship did not rest on moral performance and therefore could not be destroyed by an immoral act. The younger son unfathered the father, but the father never unsunned the younger son. The Father's unconditional love beckons us to relationship. The Father desires for each of us to receive divine love and be reconciled to himself and each other. (laughs) The older I get, the more I notice how much I favor my parents. I find myself thinking, oh wow, that was exactly what my dad would have done. Or gee, my hands are starting to look just like my mom. I truly am a reflection of my parents. And although they loved me first, my love back to them is fierce. Jesus, being fully secure in the love of his father, not only reflected his love by fiercely loving his father, but at the same time, fiercely loving humankind. Jesus personifies agape love or that self-giving love of God that's mentioned in John 17, 26. Jesus prays for all believers and concludes his prayer to the Father acknowledging his Father's love. I made your name known to them and I will make it known so that the love by which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. God's sending, pursuing, motivating, and compelling love is what characterizes Jesus. So great a love paid by such a great Lord. As the Father loves us through the Son, so the Holy Spirit empowers us to conform to the image of Jesus, the perfect Imago Dei. The Holy Spirit becomes like wind in our sails. We cannot force the wind to come, but we can prepare the sails of our life in anticipation of the movement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fashions us into the image of Jesus in each of the seven dimensions of spiritual formation. The Holy Spirit guides us from the pollution of sin. Think about this. It is the Holy Spirit that guides us from the pollution of sin to the praise and glory of God. The Holy Spirit is the perfecting work of love. The person of the Holy Spirit serves as our agent, our empowering presence, our energy of life, and a gift to believers to celebrate life and glorify Jesus and make our souls eternally alive. Through the Father's love, the Son's model and sacrifice, and the Spirit's transformational power, believers are adopted into God's family through the Spirit's working. The word adoption appears five times in Paul's writing. This adoption showcases God's love and our responsive love as is the bedrock to further conformed to God's image. I follow a couple from our church who are also on a journey towards adoption. Four years, they prepared a space in their hearts to welcome a child from another country who needs a home. The pursuit of adoption can be emotionally draining, financially taxing, and spiritually testing. Yet, now with the adoption around the corner, their hearts are soaring as they consider welcoming this child into their family. 
The Trinity is a perfect union of love, much like that human family, ready to welcome all who will into that love. It is the environment of love that we will grow into full maturity. As we walk with central women towards transformation of our spirit, emotion, relationships, intellect, vocation, physical health, and stewardship, we must keep the divine intent expressed in the garden where the love of God infused creation to be received and reciprocated in constant view. For me, growing up in a pastor's home, I realized from a young age I would be celebrated if I did the right thing. I found myself without even knowing, polishing my upfront persona without at times exposing my inner doubts and struggles. In many ways, my drug of choice became human praise. The problem with myself and many in the church world who suffer with this kind of people-pleasing addiction is we aren't sure if God really loves holistically who we are. Maybe God and others love this exterior, which is mostly all they see. When we do not allow God's love to penetrate our entire being, we can find ourselves feeling unloved. We must root out anything in our lives that keeps us from receiving God's love because true transformation is the result of acting upon that reciprocal love. So if I, as God's child, cannot fully receive his love because what I'm projecting is something different than who I for sure am, then it can become a barrier to God's love being fully seen and worked through me. Some of us find ourselves in the words of Lauren Daigle, the beautiful musician, that I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. (laughs) Am I just the sum of all the highs and all the lows? Remind me once again who I am because I really need to know today. Step into God's great love for you, expressed through the perfect love of the Trinity. When you get discouraged and you find yourself lonely or you find yourself like me on the pursuit of people pleasing to get the praise of man rather than the honor of God, whether you find yourself caught in shame or pain, Sometimes we try to get out of those places but by just trying better or doing a better job or um, growing in a certain way. But if, if what we do is not rooted in God's love, then it will stifle that growth. It is that rootedness in God's love that will grow us to fruitful fruition. And our entire lives become an act of worship as we reciprocate God's love for us. As God loves me so much, I am fixing a meal for my family that's actually an expression of God's love to my family. Even as I I work on emails at work, that can be an expression because I'm making my business or my world better because God loves me so much and so my work is an expression of his love. My stewardship becomes an expression of God's love. My emotions become an expression of God's love. My relationships become an expression of God's love. And as our life becomes an expression of receiving the love of God, then we will see ourselves together grow into that full maturity. Thank you for joining me today. I know God has great things as we come together and grow together. Thank you so much, Pastor Crystal, for sharing with us. What a fantastic way of looking at God's love and how we receive and give that love. I really want to encourage you this month to spend a lot of time in God's presence, really just reflecting on this concept. And however that looks for you, whether it's really getting outside into nature, taking a walk, or uh, putting on some worship music and really just entering into worship, please reflect on God's love, what that looks for you, um, how that looks in your life, and how you receive and give God's love because our journey of Christian spiritual formation is rooted in this concept of God's love. 
Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that you'll be with us next month as we come together and grow together.